Hey everyone, um, this is going to be a stream of consciousness video like a lot of my other ones, but um, the reason is, I guess uh, a lot of people have had that experience when you've been using a bit of equipment for a long time and you forget that it's possible of doing something and you just get used to your own workflow and you do your thing and you write music and everything's great. Um, well, I just tripped over something I wanted to do and was about to make a feature request and then realized, hang on, this device already does that. Now, let me show you what happened. I have a single drum part, well, I've got two, but let's just concentrate on drum part seven. I've got it configured on the vector so that it triggers out from triggers one, two, three, and four on the jack expander through 7.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, which are the top row of triggers out on the jack expander. That's a standard drum configuration for me. And what it sounds like right now, let's go to the pitch page. It's an eight step sequence. And um, here we go. Right. It's not good, it's not bad, it just is. Now, what I started wanting to do was do something different with the hi-hat. And we all know that the vector parts that have multiple voices, like drums or chords, the four voices within that part all have the same step length. And in this case, that's eight. What if I wanted to have the hi-hat as a different length? Well, there's a couple of things I could do. One would be to create a whole new part and program in the triggers on that, and then connect the cable from that part output to the vector, which means I've got to mess around with my cabling and don't really like doing that. Well, if I have to, I will, but I've got it set up nice and neatly at the moment. So what I kind of worked out I could do, which is similar to that, let's say I go back to this part and I'm going to duplicate it over here and I'm going to delete the hi-hats there. All right. Now we go to part five and we better unmute it. And we're gonna create a new preset in part five. And what I wanna do is create some hi-hat sounds. So what they're gonna be is they're actually gonna be a 15 step length pattern and the hi-hats are going to be on two, five, eight, eleven and fourteen, remembering that it's a 15 step pattern. Okay, so we have our preset, we have our pattern. Now at the moment that's not going to help because going to routing, part five is routed out via part five, meaning uh, that part five is routed out of the jack expander via gate five. And, and you can't change that. If you change it to be um, this, for instance, part seven voice three, that means that your routing from that drum part is actually going to come out of gate five, which isn't the outcome we want. We kind of want the opposite to that. And the way you do that is very simple, and I can't believe I forgot it. Let's go back here again. I'm on the jack expander routing now, trigger three. Very simple. I'm holding shift and I just dial left all the way back to the start, and I dial through. All of the time divisions. And here we've got. Different for each part. Now we go to part five. So that's start, gate and reset. I want it to be gate. So I've left the other three parts as they were 7.1.2 and 0.4. But now trigger three is gonna come from the gate on part five, which I just configured, right? So now I'm gonna do this hit run. And I get that 15 step pattern 
for a hi-hat moving over the eight step pattern of the kick and clap and snare boom right so i mean that's cool but what i can also do is say get another part with just a standard hi-hat pattern and i go back to control it's an eight step one this time as i said i'm going to keep it standard and i'm just going to have them on here and those two so this one is going to sound like this all right now i'm reaching over to my launch pad here and i'm just going to switch parts or presets rather on part five so that it moves between the 15 step one and the eight step one Right, so this implementation of that idea is pretty straightforward, but what it's allowed me to do without mucking around with my cabling, um, because I've got a bit of routing with some trunking modules done here to keep things under the deck and all that stuff. And in a very easy way, I've brought a bit of variation into that drum part and I could do a lot more with that. Um, so let's go back on to preset A03. We'll make a copy of that over here and let's just for giggles, add in some more stuff. And what we're gonna do is, I'm just choosing things at random here, so I don't know if this is gonna be musical or not, or if it was in the first place, you can be the judge of that. So let's have a listen. Too many ratchets. What you hear with those ratchets is I've got my assimilator set up with multiple hat sounds um, and it's choosing randomly between them so with every hit you're getting a different sample sound and because you're hearing a few close together there you can hear it's like the drummer's hitting the side of the hat slightly differently with each stick as you hear that ratchet Anyway, I thought that was a good fun thing of routing in the vector um, that I'd forgotten about. Thanks.